It's a Dota Weekly show. Yay! Hey guys, you're watching the Dota Weekly show, your source of news, mechanics, and whatever that interests me. I'm Luminous, your host for the show, and let's get right into the news. Sad news to start it off, MYM is disbanding. Last week, Melk has issued a formal statement saying that, you know, we're done, we're, we're done playing. Uh, instead of playing Dota, a lot of every player will be playing that game called Real Life instead. So that's sad news indeed. They've been the consistently one of the most consistent team in the European scene for the past five, six years. Uh, you know, back in when a lot of us just started playing Dota, they were there. And now they are gone. They're, it's done. Um, and, and it's very, very sad news to, to hear. A lot of people are attributing it to their weak, I guess, weak, weak performance in Gamescom. They've been trailing very hard. They've been winning a lot of games, winning a lot of tournaments. They've been undefeated going into Gamescom for a long time. And the performance here in Gamescom wasn't the best. And that might have been the last draw for MYM. So MYM is taking a break right now, I want to say, because it's very likely that when Dota 2 comes out, they will be coming back full force. So, you know, Pusher will still be there. I'm happy to think about that. Now, for current MYM team, uh, in the HFGL tournament, which is a Chinese online tournament, and MYM has been invited to that, there's no formal statement from the MYM organization, nor there's a formal statement from the HFGL admin saying that, hey, this will be the next team that's replacing MYM. So it's very likely that the MYM organization is currently looking for a new roster to actually compete in the tournament. So if that's the case, then we're, might, we're gonna see a new MYM roster very, very quickly. And of course, I will tell you the roster once it is available. Now, just right next door in the European scene, M5 is getting a couple of new guys. And it's looking up for M5. They have getting Vigos and PGG, some guys you might have heard of. And uh, these two are very, very strong players. I had the pleasure of watching some of their more recent replays. And uh, the skill, let me tell you, the skill level is there. The skill, individual skill is, is really there. Now, my question, and I think a lot of people are asking the same question, is how how long they will be staying together. Because if you look at PGG and Vigos' track record in the last couple of years, they haven't been really staying with one team for a very, very long time. And the stable rosters is always the way to go. So that that is kind of my thought in terms of, hey, when I saw this roster, is, is this a really good idea to have Vigos and PGG? Very, very strong players, but I'm not too sure how stable they will be. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. And there's going to be more official matches for M5 coming out very, very soon. And, uh, of course, I'll give you updates and commentaries on that as well. Last, let's go back to the Chinese scene a little bit. PLT, which played for eHome, went to IG for like a week, and now he's going back to eHome. eHome instead is kicking out FCB, which Crystal, or Chinese player, call him the rat. Um, and they're bringing in a pub player, so this is very interesting. Last time we saw a very successful pub player was Yafit. Um, so let's see if this pub player is going to have a lot of expectation on him, and it's going to have a lot of expectation on eHome as an organization, why they're choosing a pub player and not a very established player from the professional circuit. So with that in mind, eHome is getting their roster 5, but IG.Z doesn't have 5 anymore, so they're, you know, poaching around for a 5th player. Of course, you will see them playing this Saturday um, for the HFGL tournament. I'll talk about that in just a bit, um, and they will have their full roster then. For more news and interview and whatever videos, you want to check out sggamer.dota or gosugamer.net.dota. A lot more information you can find there. So let's move on to mechanics for this week. For this week's mechanic portion, I want to talk about some item comparisons. And specifically, I want to compare the item of Butterfly versus Desolator as a pure DPS choice. And before I get into the comparison, obviously the Butterfly gives you really nice evasion bonuses and gives you a little bit of armor to work with as well. But the Butterfly is also 1600 gold more expensive, so with that goal, you can kind of get away saying, you know, Desolator plus talism Talisman of Evasion compared to a Butterfly. So just keep that in mind. I say, again, I go through this comparison only on the DPS side. All right, so Desolator deals this damage through giving the enemy hero a minus armor effect, whereas Butterfly deals damage by increasing your attack speed. Uh, both deal plus 60 damage, so the comparison there is, is fairly even. So for the most part, we're only looking at an attack speed increase versus minus armor. Uh, after I do all the math, which you can find the math in the description box, you could see a graph like this. Now one of the most obvious things you can see from this graph is that Butterfly seems to do better against high armor value heroes, and the Desolator actually does worse against high armor heroes. So you might make the conclusion and say, hey, Minus armor is really, really bad against high armor heroes. And that's false to a certain extent. 
What this graph tells you actually is not that minus armor is bad against high armor hero, is that increasing your own attack speed is actually better than lowering the enemy's armor value. Okay, here's a very simple example to showcase what I'm talking about. Let's say your hero does 100 damage and the enemy hero has 90% damage reduction. You're doing 10 damage. Let's say you want to double that damage through minus armor. You have to get around like 90 something minus armor to make that happen, which is ridiculous amount of minus armor you have to go through. Or a better way to do damage against really high armor value heroes is just getting attack speed. You could get just, you know, plus 100 attack speed or just double attack speed and you will just double your DPS in that way. So again, that, that simplifying example to, is to show that yes, minus armor is still good in every stage of the game, but sometimes, and often case in very late game when enemy heroes have very high armor, oftentimes getting more attack speed increase your DPS by a higher amount. And that's what this graph is talking about. Yes, the minus six armor desolator is good still, it's just that the butterfly's plus 60 attack speed is just better. So please don't look at this graph and be like, oh, minus armor is bad against high armor heroes. It's just that something else is better. Very clear distinction that I hope you guys will find. Now, obviously, Desolator and Butterfly aren't really first choice core items. Generally, you get it you know, after another item or two. And w when we were making this item comparison, we had in mind of, hey, we're going to use the agility hero, of course, so the butterfly don't get, you know, shafted in that sense. And also, we're going to do it like a semi-carry sort of thing. So I'm thinking Potom when I think this. So a lot of more obvious item choice that a Potom would get before, let's say, a Desolator or a Butterfly is most likely Manta Style. And Manta Style has a somewhat interesting interaction with it. Of course, your Manta Style illusions don't get the plus damage that the Desolator offers. But it also benefits from the minus 6 uh, armor on the enemy hero. Um, on the other hand, Butterfly's Manta Style Illusion, they do benefit because uh, Illusions get the plus 30 agility, which grants them plus 30 damage. And also they have higher attack speed through the agility as well. So we sat down, we crunched the number, how does Butterfly and Manta Style stack up against Desolator and Manta Style. And here's a graph we got. Now we didn't label it for this graph, but it will show that the Butterfly is better on the bottom half portion of the graph and then the Desolator is better on the top portion of the graph. And you can see that this graph also supports what I was saying earlier in terms of when the armor value gets higher and higher, it, it makes the Desolator more and more difficult to compete compared to a Butterfly. And adding a Manta Style doesn't actually help the case, it actually makes Desolator a worse off item in terms of comparison. Now, if you're interested in the math, you could check it out in the description box. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the strategic portion of the two items now. Of course, you know, math is always nice. You could say, hey, you know, Butterfly seems to be better um, compared to Desolator against high armor heroes. But here's some strategic implication of, of these mathematics and uh, some of the stuff we miss. One of the bigger things we miss in our, in our formulas is that uh, we, we strictly compare the Desolator to Butterfly as a 1v1 kind of a situation. But a, a minus armor, your, your, your teammates could also benefit from a minus armor. Whereas the butterfly, you get it for DPS for yourself. Of course, you know, when you put the minus armor on enemy hero, all your teammates hits harder. Uh, so that's, that's something to think about as, as you're making this uh, comparison yourself. Also, the Desolator builds up a lot better than the Butterfly in terms of the items and the damage that it gives you. The, the Desolator is far more effective in terms of a DPS item, uh, in terms of the buildup. And of course, you get the Desolator a lot, a lot quicker. Um, so that's that's very, very devastating as well. Desolator, if you pick up very, very early, if you look at the previous graph that we talked about, against low armor heroes, um, it, it's far better than, than, than picking up any sort of attack speed. Um, so gotta keep that in mind as well so if you could pick up desolator quite early in the game especially against you know low armor heroes such as supports or if they have very squishy armor in terms of carries then in that regard desolator is far better uh, than a butterfly it, it just depends on what stages of the game where you pick it up and how quickly you pick it up and that's that's kind of all the arguments that's helping out desolator now let's look at what are the arguments that hurts desolator as the item and the biggest thing is medallion courage yes minus six armor on enemy hero is really great but you don't have to get it through the desolator you can just get a medallion and that's a lot cheaper in fact you can ask your support to get it and and that will increase your whole team's dps by a far amount and the damage given through the desolator plus 60 it's, it's okay it's pretty good but if you want to do the through that kind of damage with four four thousand four hundred gold you could get better damage elsewhere. 
you can see that a big portion of buying the Desolator is also buying that Minus Armor effect. And that Minus Armor effect you could get very cheaply elsewhere, Medallion Courage. So in, in that regard, it really hurts Desolator as an item, uh, and it's not that good at all. Also, it's a very interesting conclusion that we got is, hey, Desolator is not that good against High Armor Hero. Again, it's still good, but not as good as getting increased attack speed items. So a lot of times in, in a lot of pro games, we would say, hey, um, there is a DK on the other side, there is a Roof Trailer on the other side, there is a Lich on the other side. Why don't we just get a Desolator to help out with our little damage? Uh, you're better off getting um, you know, attack speed increase items, you're better off like a Django. Uh, you're better off getting AC, which you know increase your team's attack speed aura. And also give you a little bit of minus armor. So, uh, I, I hope this comparison was um, interesting in more than a couple of ways. First, we knew Butterfly in the late game scenario is better in most cases. Secondly, we understood why it's better in terms of it, the attack speed increase is generally more preferable than a minus armor debuff when you're up against high armor heroes. I hope you guys found this a little bit interesting. And next week, I'm going to do a little bit of similar item comparison to go through the math, go through the strategic portion, and then, you know, kind of talk about the item comparison. Okay, so for this week's interesting happenings, if you want to call that, I've been given the honor to cast for MYM TV for the HFGL tournament, or at least the first opening matches. And the first opening matches is this Friday, which should be tomorrow when this video is released, uh, in 20 CET. So that's actually going to be my first really live casting experience. Of course, I, I've done some live casting in the past, but this is really new territory for me. So I hope you guys can show up and then support me there. And also about streaming, i actually been streaming a lot. Like, I mean, a lot lately. Uh, not, not like casting streaming, but mostly just me playing pub games with fellow Dota commentary community. So, so do catch my stream. That is going to be in front of .com uh for the live stream for the GFHL tournament. That should be in DC as well. Uh, or you can find it definitely on nym.com for sure. So keep an eye out for that. And that should be it for this week's Dota Weekly Show. Hope you guys enjoy the news mechanics and uh, support me on the stream this Friday. So until then, as always... This is Luminous signing off. See you guys.